In this video, I'm going to be talking about the four cars in the Heritage Fleet dedicated to the UP STEAM program based in Cheyenne, Wyoming. From front to rear, they are the Art Lockman, Howard Fogg, Lynn Nystrom, and Reed Jackson. Art Lockman was built for the Union Pacific in 1962 by the St. Louis Car Company and delivered as baggage car 6334. As passenger service wound down, the car was converted in 1973 to a tool car for use in snowplow service. The car was renumbered at that time to 904304. In 1981, the car was assigned to the Heritage Fleet and received its current name in 1992. Mr. Lockman was a longtime employee with the railroad. In 2003, the car returned to its original number of 6334. The car is classified as a tool car and has been upgraded continually over the years to better serve the train crew. Today the car has storage tanks for grease, oil, solvents, in addition to a generator, tools and workspace to support most operations while on the road with the steam locomotives. To model this car, I started out with the Walther's City Baggage Car. I left the striker plates in place as this is the only car in the Heritage Fleet that does not use the tube diaphragms. All of the factory details on the underside of the car were removed. Some pieces were reused by gluing them in their proper place for prototype pictures. Styrene and brass rod were again used to duplicate the detailed tanks, cabinets, plumbing, and brackets from the prototype pictures. One side of the car needed no modifications other than adding grab irons to the doors. The other side was modified by cutting two rectangles in the appropriate places for a window and vent. Clear styrene was used for the window and window tint was applied on the inside of all windows. Styrene strips were added to the vent opening, then painted armor yellow. Black styrene was then glued behind the vent opening. The roof of the car was modified by scratch building vents, antennas, and GPS antennas for prototype pictures. Decals were added to the sides and the whole car was airbrushed with gloss lacquer. Howard Fogg started life in 1949 when the Union Pacific received baggage dormitory car 6006 from American Car and Foundry. In 1962, the car was converted to a boiler baggage dorm configuration and renumbered to 304. In 1987, the car was once again renumbered to 209 and then assigned to the railroad's heritage fleet in 1990. The current name was assigned to the car in 1996 after the death of the famous railroad artist. During 2000, the car was once again converted to a new configuration. A diesel power generator was added to provide head and power for 7 to 10 cars depending on how hot it is outside. Baggage area is no longer and the car is now classified as a boiler dorm HEP. On the underside of the car, the most noticeable difference is the addition of the large water tank near the middle of the car. The steam generator is handy for the steam crew as they can use it to run steam driven accessories on the locomotives without having to fire their boilers. In addition, steam from the Howard Fog can be used to accelerate the firing of the locomotive boilers. Rounding out the dorm designation are three sleeping rooms, a laundry room, shower, and a small lounge for the crew. The floor was removed and swapped with the floor and trucks from a Walther City baggage car, which has the correct three axle trucks used today. To model the large grill on one of the sides, I cut a rectangle hole using photos for reference in size and placement. Black speaker grill cloth was stretched over the inside of the hole and glued around the inside edges with CA. A speaker and enclosure were placed directly behind the opening and is now connected to a Soundtracks Tsunami Sound Car Decoder. A styrene frame was cut to go around the outside of the hole. I glued etched metal pieces from a Detail Associates GE B40-8 radiator detail kit to form the polished metal grill used on the prototype. This is a compromise as the grill is not exact, but does provide the same look and feel for the original. I removed all the factory detail parts from the bottom of the car. Then I began billing the water and fuel tanks from styrene and glued them in their appropriate places. Next came the smaller details and the entire bottom was painted. Next, the window tent, the weight, and the tube diaphragms were added to the car. 
Numerous prototype photos were used to fabricate the plating, vents, exhaust, and antennas used on the roof. The UP crew keeps the cars pretty clean, so I'm only modeling the car with a light weathering around the GPS antenna and the exhaust. Some trips this can get pretty sooty on the, the real thing. Um, I can add weathering as I need, so I'm starting off with light weathering. The only thing missing are the IFIC decals to the top of the large side grille, as I haven't found a way to make them look right yet. Car 5714 has served the Union Pacific since being delivered from the American Car and Foundry Company in 1957. Built as a postal storage car, it was converted to the current configuration of a baggage recreation car, presumably before the car was named. UP does not list the history of the car, other than to say that it served in ski train service before being assigned to the Heritage Fleet. While the car number has not changed, it has received several names over the years. In 1993, the car was named the Pony Express and held that name until 2004 when it was renamed the Golden State Limited. After the death of longtime STEAM team member and engineer Lynn Nystrom in 2010, the car was once again renamed in his honor. When not working in the cab of 844 or 3985, Lynn was often seen riding in this car with the doors open. A model of this ACF postal storage car is currently not produced, but the Walther's Pullman Standard 72-foot baggage car is a very close stand-in. The differences are that I understand the prototype car to be 73 feet in length, and the door spacing is a few scale feet off from the prototype. While not perfect, I decided to go with close enough for this project. I started the project by removing the eight roof vents and sanding down the entire roof so that it was smooth. Drip edges were cut from styrene and glued to the roof above the doors. One brass wire grab iron and a firecracker antenna were installed. All detail parts were removed from the bottom and replaced with scratch built parts to match the prototype car. Since crew members often ride in this car with some combination of open doors, I decided to reflect this by removing both doors from one side of the car. The visible part of the interior was painted Harbor Miss Gray. Because the factory yellow paint did not match the new Walther City cars, I repainted both sides. I used a combination of decals I printed myself and ones from Microscale for the car. The final task was replacing the factory trucks with the correct ones from another Walther's car. Concession car Reed Jackson started life on the Union Pacific Railroad as a postal storage car. Originally delivered in 1961 by the St. Louis Car Company, car 5818 served seven years in this role before being converted to a maintenance of way tool car. In 1981, the car was converted to a kitchen car for use by the maintenance crews. The car was once again converted into the present configuration of concession car in 1992. It was assigned to the Heritage Fleet and named the Sherman Hill at that time. In 2009, the car was renamed Reed Jackson in honor of the longtime UP employee that had worked as part of the STEAM program. To model this car, I started with a Walther City baggage car to use as the core. The sides were removed and replaced by American Model Builders acrylic RPO sides, which most closely matched the prototype from what I could find available. Some modifications were needed first, and the most noticeable is the large grille on one side of the car. I cut out a rectangle shaped hole in the side and glued brass wire to the back of the car side with CA. Styrene and wood filler were used to finish the modifications required to make the new sides and reflect the prototype. A few of the other modifications are various vents and a window that was cut out on another side. I used styrene to build all the various underside tanks, cabinets, and piping details. The larger parts are glued in plates first, and then the styrene rod was added to simulate the visible piping and conduit. Detail parts on the roof were replicated with styrene using prototype pictures. Custom decals along with those from Microscale were added. This is the only car that displays www.upsteam.com UP uses this car to display modest-sized decals on one end of the car for various events. Past examples include state celebrations, UP's 150th anniversary, and model railroader's 75th anniversary. Because this decal on the prototype changes about every year, 
I chose to model the car without a decal. Whether behind 844, 3985, or in a few years hopefully 4014, the Cheyenne based Heritage Fleet cars continue to support UP Steam program. Thanks for watching my video of these four cars and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see the latest on my Heritage Fleet and other projects.